All stories build to a climactic moment, and that collection of scenes often determines how satisfied the audience will be when the story ends. Which is why I want to take a closer look at the climaxes from X2 and The Last Stand, so aspiring writers can take away a few key points to hopefully improve their own story. Generally, X2 left audiences more satisfied than The Last Stand. Diagramming both helps to show why, and allows us to highlight three main points that are important to storytelling in general. The importance of characters making difficult choices, consequences of the choices made, and the plausible causation that weaves it all together. But before we analyze both films, let's first diagram each one so these points become more clear. And while I diagram, I'll note the important choices that affect the story's plot. At the start of the third act, X2 focuses on the following main conflict. Will a tenuously united band of adversarial mutants stop Stryker from killing all mutants by using a brainwashed Professor X? Former enemies unite to overcome their mutual problem. There is only one known way in and out of the dam, which has a series of tunnels the protagonists are forced to navigate to find Professor X. They have no choice but to venture into the heavily guarded structure if they want to save themselves and their friends. But once inside, the team separates. Wolverine breaks away, wanting to find Stryker to uncover answers about his past. Storm and Nightcrawler go to rescue the kids, while Jean goes with Magneto and Mystique to find Professor X. But along the way, Jean separates when a brainwashed Cyclops attacks. She deals with him as Magneto and Mystique continue on. Meanwhile, Wolverine encounters Stryker, but first needs to get past Yuriko, which sets up one of the best battles in the X-Men movie series. At the same time, Storm and Nightcrawler rescue the kids, while Jean does the same for Cyclops. After, they regroup and head for Professor X. Magneto and Mystique reach Charles first, just as Charles finishes targeting all mutants. Magneto stops Charles, but instead of rescuing him, Magneto and Mystique use him to target all humans, essentially turning Stryker's plan on its head. They then leave, but before Charles finishes targeting all humans, Wolverine catches up with Stryker. Stryker tempts Logan with answers, but once the dam breaks, Logan decides to go back and save the X-Men, who have made their way to Professor X. Storm and Nightcrawler stop Charles, and then save him. The team then frantically makes their way through the tunnels to exit the dam, ignorant that the spillway had been flooded. But Wolverine reaches them just in time, closes the doors, and leads them to an alternate escape, ignorant that Magneto and Mystique went the same way and used the helicopter themselves, and even took Pyro with them. The Rogue and Bobby show up with the X-Wing, right as the dam gives way. Wolverine is tempted one last time before heading to the X-Wing, but the jet won't restart, and Jean chooses to sacrifice herself so her friends can survive. This diagram already tells us a lot, but before we analyze in more detail how this climax works as a single cohesive act, let's diagram The Last Stand to see how it differs. At the start of the third act, The Last Stand focuses on the following main conflict. Will the X-Men be able to stop the Brotherhood from destroying the mutant cure, while saving Jean from the powerful phoenix within her? After Magneto drops the Golden Gate Bridge at the base of Alcatraz Island, the X-Men arrive just before the Brotherhood storm the facility to kill the boy, Jimmy. The two sides then square off, with the X-Men trying to prevent the Brotherhood from entering the building. The act then proceeds in stages. The pawns first attack the line made by the X-Men, but are unsuccessful. Calypso and the Juggernaut then enter the fray, Calypso targeting Storm while the Juggernaut goes for the boy. But Kitty stops him, beats him, and stays with Jimmy to help keep him safe. Storm then beats Calypso. After this, Magneto and Pyro get involved. To defeat this threat, Iceman steps forward and enters into a head-to-head -head showdown between Fire and Ice. After Bobby beats Pyro, Wolverine, Colossus, Beast, and Storm team up to take down a waiting Magneto. And they do just that, turning him into the very thing that he despises. But instead of the battle being over, the military attacks and awakens the Phoenix, who then activates and destroys almost everything in sight, which prompts Wolverine to step up and slowly work his way to Jean. Once he reaches her, he plunges his claws into her stomach, killing her, but saving her and everyone else from the uncontrollable power within. By the two diagrams, we can already see that the two acts have a different structure. X2 is a rescue where our heroes venture into the lair of the antagonist. The Last Stand is also a rescue of sorts, but instead of venturing into the lair of the antagonist, the good guys and the bad guys square off on neutral ground. Neither of these structures makes one better than the other, 
But when we use the three earlier points to analyze how each of these X-Men movies are carried out, it becomes clear why X2 stands out. In both movies, characters make tough choices. But in X2, not only are more choices made, there are more characters making those tough choices. The more characters who make tough choices, even if they are antagonists, the better your story will typically be, because people making choices is what usually makes a character relatable. And especially in a story where the protagonist is more of a team than an individual, the more people who make tough choices, the better. Really though, what makes the climax of X2 stand out from The Last Stand is how all the choices made by our characters have important and believable consequences. In looking at this aspect, we'll put points 2 and 3 together. Let's start with 5 big moments from Act 3 of X2. The Wolverine vs. Yuriko fight is among the best one-on-one -on -one battles from a comic book movie. Part of the reason this fight works is because it follows from Wolverine's choice to go after Stryker. To get to Stryker, Wolverine needs to go through Yuriko, and it is believable that Wolverine would go after Stryker since his desire to learn about his past had been written into the story. Magneto and Mystique never could have flipped Stryker's plan on its head if the team hadn't separated. Not only did Storm and Nightcrawler separate from Jean, but Jean is pulled away by Scott. Isolating Magneto and Mystique in this way worked because each of our heroes had believable reasons to break off, and Magneto and Mystique's plan fits with their ambition based upon what had been established in the first X-Men movie. And this sets up the need for the X-Men to not only stop Charles, but to save him as well. If Storm and Nightcrawler did not put faith into Nightcrawler's ability, then all humans would have been killed by Charles, and Charles would not have survived the dam's collapse. Wolverine would not have been able to save his friends if he hadn't chased down Stryker. Chasing down Stryker allowed Wolverine to find a second way out, and let him know that the dam had ruptured early enough to do something about it. And Jean never would have needed to sacrifice herself if her battle with Scott didn't push her to use her great power which created a blast of kinetic energy that caused the dam to break. All of these big moments were caused by previous choices made, and each of them progressed in a believable way, with each successive event building tension to its highest point. Contrast this to five big moments from The Last Stand's climax. The last act of the movie progresses in clear stages, with the X-Men and the Brotherhood breaking off into one-on-one -on -one fights. But unlike X2, each individual battle is disconnected from the others, Kitty beating the Juggernaut had no effect on the Storm and Calypso fight, and that fight had no effect on Bobby taking on Pyro, which had no effect on Magneto getting taken down, which had no effect on Jean getting attacked by the military. The only loose affiliation linking these battles is that one happened because the previous failed. But the Brotherhood were not there to fight the X-Men. They were there to kill the source of the mutant cure. Presumably, if the Juggernaut had killed the boy, the Brotherhood would have left and the fighting would stop, which leads to the biggest problem in all the climax. None of it needed to happen. If the goal was to kill the boy, Magneto or Jean could have easily done that at any point. As cool as it is to see Magneto carry the Golden Gate Bridge to Alcatraz Island, there's no established reason why Magneto didn't collapse the building from far away. There's no reason Magneto didn't drop the bridge on the building. There's no reason Magneto or Jean stood back like generals and watched the carnage unfold. If Magneto or Jean really wanted the boy dead, there are countless ways that that could have happened before we arrived at this point, or this point, or even this point. This means that the entire third act does not progress in a believable way. As cool as each of these scenes were individually, they lacked cohesion, and since none of them needed to happen, that means that the highest point of tension in the story also did not need to happen. The takeaway? When writing a story, stakes not only need to be elevated, they need to elevate believably. This happens in X2 and is not in The Last Stand. To put it simply, The Last Stand sacrifices story for spectacle, whereas X2 does not. X2 tells a gripping and coherent story that is believable within the laws of the story's universe. The Last Stand, on the other hand, is essentially two stories mashed together as one. Half of the story is about saving Jean from the evil phoenix. The other half is about the mutant cure and whether it should exist. By combining these two stories, we didn't get a more exciting movie. We got a poorly developed story with a climax that doesn't follow in a believable way, and it overshadows one of the more emotional storylines. Should Rogue take the mutant cure, and will she? Rogue who has to make one of the biggest choices in the movie, is left out of the third act. 
But even after offering such a harsh critique of The Last Stand, I'll admit that the first time I saw it back in 2006, I enjoyed it. Being an X-Men fan since childhood, I can't help but enjoy X-Men movies, even The Last Stand, despite its problems. This video does not express the opinion that you should not like The Last Stand. This video only uses the flaws from The Last Stand to show how great X2 was, which hopefully helps anyone who currently is or one day hopes to write a story of their own. X-Men stories have a lot of characters, but everything we've gone over can apply to a story with less character arcs to consider. By making sure that your characters make difficult choices, that those choices have important consequences, and that it all follows in a believable way, you will develop a story that people want to see or read. And perhaps most importantly, don't get discouraged. Sometimes, especially when looking at a story in hindsight, creating a great movie like X2 sounds easy. But of course, it is extremely difficult, especially when your starting point is this. Thank you everyone for watching. As I said after the last post, I'll be taking some time off from making videos. This isn't the end of the channel, but with traveling and all the other writing projects I have underway, something needs to give. I don't know how long I'll be away, but I will be back with more videos that focus on the writing process. On that note, one thing I'll be focused on over the next few months is submitting one of my novels to publishers. One aspect that agents and publishers look at is sales of previously published works, which I have. An Evil is a horror novella that uses the Book of Job as inspiration for the story. If you like horror, mystery, and suspense, you'll like An Evil. Being that it's my first published work, I've priced it as low as Amazon will let me. 99 cents for Kindle and 5.99 for paperback. Click on the link in the description below to buy a copy. Thank you all for your support, for watching this video, and for subscribing to this channel. I'm not sure when I'll see you next, but until then, have a great day.